Hi and welcome to the first part of our next project. Um, if you've seen my other videos you'll have seen we did the other bike to this uh, which came from a friend which was the Daedalo uh, green and yellow one. That's now complete and is on its way to its new owner. So I thought we'll, we'll get on to this one. Um, it was quite an interesting story which you may have seen in the other videos is this spent 20 years buried in a hedge um, and when they were clearing the, the hedge and cutting it back they found the bike uh, and then he stored it I think in his shed for the past 10 years as well so overall lost for 30 years um, the plan is to do it as a, a rat ride of sorts so as the tyres are roached um, and get those changed out I'll do a quick walk around tour in a bit just to kind of show the overall condition um, is service it or strip it service the parts we can service change any bits that are worn get the tyres changed and make it a rideable rat ride I think it's just going to look really cool uh, with a clear coat lacquer on there uh, the amount of work and money that you need to invest to take this back to a factory shiny bike just isn't worth it and I think it's just got a, such a cool story that we should just try and preserve that story as well um, it's a talking point whenever it's seen so has bent front forks which we'll straighten as we go through I think what we'll do is get the spanners out and we'll start stripping down so we'll have a bit of a, a tour of it I think I've already shown you around it once but now we've got it on the stand we can look a bit better so we've got still look quite a lot of corrosion uh, moving parts or adjustable parts such as the seat post the uh, crank is almost solid I'm trying to get that to turn so we're going to have to strip that down and get inside there uh, brakes etc locked up on rims rusty uh, this tyre is totally shot um, we threw on the canvas here so that's going to have to be replaced so I've got to look whether I can find a red line for it or if we're just going to have to go with a standard black ribbed rear tyre brakes etc so the tyre is shot we've got a new red line which I bought when we were doing the green bike uh, same with all the kind of adjustment on here so um, yeah bit of work so I've actually had these off before when uh, we were first assessing it so they are pretty loose so we should get to get these off oh, yeah that one's really loose get these off quite easy uh, both inner tubes are punctured front and rear. The rim is pretty shot as well. The tyre is absolutely gone. It is an original red line. I can just see a remnant of it there. Um, but as you can see from the rim, it's it's really bad. So I think what we'll end up trying to do is just clean up the brake surface, um, and then that's gone beyond. So I might just just take off some of the worst of the rust and then um, give it a, a clear coat. But then just leave this surface clean so it'll, it's got breaking but yeah we need to change all that out um, looking on the internet the excessive price for um, an original tyre I think about nearly 100 pounds for a new red line but we'll, we'll have to look at that in the future and have a look brake condition is uh, pretty poor as well I don't know if you guys can see that so let's just lift you up a little bit so you can see yeah we've got pretty bad braking so I've got to decide what I'm going to do with this are we going to try and uh, flat it back to steel um, or just try and clean it to make it keep that rat appearance the fender front fenders also broke off the brackets so I might just have to see if we can fabricate something there to, to hold that back into place so it doesn't rattle and if you can see the forks they are leaning back they should be probably a good five or ten mil further forward so I think they're bent up here on the tube so when I get that parted out I'll be able to see and probably just try and put some heat into it and straighten it back out so I think what I'll do is get you guys into a better position so you can see the rest of the strip down and we'll carry on the back uh, really looks pretty solid so I'm going to just try and rubber mallet it on off sorry moving but that is tight I think we'll get a bit of uh, WD-40 on that once again why I don't do this before and I don't know what I could do with um, it, some help on as well 
is obviously I'm using the WD to loosen some of these uh, moving parts but um, some of it's gone onto the frame which I'm trying to keep as rusty and then lacquer coat it so what I'd like to know is is there a solution I can put on there just to remove the oily film that the WD-40 has left uh, without having to sort of put thinners on there and anything that might damage the uh, paint well not the paint but the rust um, look so if you guys have ever done anything like that can you give me a shout or put some comments below that would be appreciated it's going should fall out and so I've loosened the other side because the chain is uh, missing off it. This side's easier because it's uh, the chain side it's, it's actually got oil on it protecting it so over the years so it's actually not too dry. This side's coming off quite easy. The Sturmy Archer 3 speed um, chain is snapped in the past so we'll need to replace that and put that on the part list. Should now flats that should pull out. Just catching on the brakes, which I can't loosen them because they're jammed. There we go. We'll realign the bike in a moment, but yeah, this is the same as well. We're, we're quite crusty on the rim, but this is the sort of thing I was talking about. So where the WD-40 has run onto the rust, you can see a discoloration. I want to get rid of that oily film and try and get it back to a dry rust. So I can just maybe just lightly uh, wire it just to get rid of the surface stuff. And then I can lacquer coat those. Um, and then I'll have to look at a way of putting a, a breaking edge on there. But yeah. Also, I've been looking at this as well. Is I'm, I think this is a, a replacement tyre back in the day. Uh, but I have seen bikes that... Even when they've been restored fully, they've got the white walls instead of the red lines. So if anybody can sort of advise me on that, that would also be useful. I've also been looking for, or well we can look for, the uh, frame number. I believe it's on here, or on one of these, so it's probably not on that side. There's no markings on that one. Let's go to the other side. Search a bit more. I can't see a frame number now. I know we should have one on. No. I was led to believe they're stamped on here somewhere, but it's on the inside or outside. I don't know. Um, quite a lot of corrosion on the inside of them, so I can't actually see. Can't actually see anything on there. So that would be another useful tip if somebody can point me in the right direction. Is it on the. Turn it so you can see it. Is it on the inner edge? or outer edge of the rear um, supports um, that'd be useful So once again, I'm going to put a, a crowbar into the forks at the bottom to hold it and then try and work against it. These things that I don't know if you can see on camera, that is absolutely, oh there we go, got some movement.
that's going. I thought that was slipping, but that's actually going. That's it. There we go. Yep, there we go. So it looked bad, but that's come off. And then we've got the original rally light bracket. So uh, I learnt my lesson last uh, on the last project where we undid this and the ball bearings went everywhere. Um, I don't know if you can see the bottom cage. I'll just drop you down a little bit. But uh, that bottom cage is really bad in there. The ball bearings in that are terrible. Um, they're going to go absolutely everywhere. I think what it might be a case of is we just have to drop them and then we cover them after but we'll see if we can get them all in one hit yeah, if you can see in there how dry all that is there uh, that's the first one gone so what I'll do is I'll get a little pot and I think we'll drop them in and I'll have to sort it around on the floor and try and find where I've just dropped that one. So it did quite well there until then. Just drop these top ones in as well. I've got these four or five of them on the floor now. That'd be interesting. So you may remember earlier I said that uh, this was wrapping around. I thought one of the brackets had broken. It turns out underneath, didn't see that on the last one, I thought it was riveted on the last one. There's just a little tab there, um, which if I press that down, it should be able to lock it in a bit better. It's just obviously come loose. So I'll tap that back and that should hold the uh, fender in place. But I'm going to take that off anyway. And you can see, hopefully from there, you can see we've got quite a bad bend. So if I try and hold that straight, you can see it bends there. So I'm going to have to try and warm that. Pull this bottom round again to bring the legs straight. Um, have to see how we go with that. You can see it's just sort of bent the paint a bit there, but it's paint. But yeah, there's a definite bend on that tube there. Okay, so what we'll do is now we'll probably take this linkage off. It's broken off the stermy, as I said. So there's a couple of bolts under there. Take those off and we'll lift that out of the way. Try not to. Shear the bolts, fixing bolts. Hold up the spanners. Get WD for it in a minute. Spinning, that's spinning the whole assembly around, which is what I thought. Try this front one. It also feels like it's spinning. No, that front one's coming off. That's okay. That's all. So, any ideas? What you guys do when the nut? It's just basically spinning on the bolt. Um, I'd be interested to find out what you can do on those. So first of all, as we did before, we have to get the uh, pin out. Of the uh, that holds the crank arm on. It's probably is supposed to be imperial, but 11 mil is what I've got on there. It's a good fit. That's simply gone. See how it goes. I'm going to put the nut back on so I don't hit the end of it or flatten the end of the pin. But I'm going to see if I can tap it through. That is solid. Pick a persuader. See what we can get with this.
that's not shifting. See what we can do on the other side. Right, so the crank side is moving. I'll go back to the rubber mallet just to tap it out. That's it, it's gone. What I'll do is, I don't know if they should have original. So this one here, you can see in there, will be round a bit. So this one has all well, the rally. Uh, topped bolts. There's the other one. I've just got a standard bolt on it. Now, I don't think anything's been changed, but I wouldn't have expected one to be rally one and one to be plain. So something's changed there. I think. Let's have a go at this offline and come back. I'm not yet sure how much I'm supposed to show you and how much you guys want to see. So you might need to just put comments in the below as well. Again. Um, don't know if you want to see me struggle for 20 minutes or 15 minutes um, trying to get the pin out and if you end up seeing me having to cut the bolt um, because it ends up busting the threads so the threads are totally shot on that bolt now on the on this nut so if ended up having to cut the nut off um, the pin is pretty well uh, chewed up as well now some of you could say well I've gone too much town on it but I do need to get this off and I have soaked it it's been soaking for about three weeks and basically sometimes it's just it's it's sacrifice so you have to get a new uh, pin for that still can get them I've seen them um, just would have preferred not to have done that but um, it's you know it's how far do you go um, cut, you know as soon as you start hitting this with anything mal it wasn't moving so I've had to hammer it but then as I say I've tried not to deform it but we've gone past that point so what I'm going to do is just tap this through hopefully I lost the battery there on the other camera so swapped you over so as I say my main aim isn't to destroy as many parts as possible it is to try and get it apart but sometimes it just doesn't want to go so I'm going to drift this out now hopefully See, I've really have um, doesn't I don't like doing, but I've really have destroyed that pin. But um, we can get those replacements. The main important thing was to get this off. Um, as I say, it's, it is absolutely lock solid, so we weren't going anywhere if we didn't do it. Hmm. Oh, the tank's off. Tap this one forward, I think. Yep. and now we can access the piece we need in there so um, it's on before yeah that is absolutely solid now without the uh, ability of turning it on the crank so basically get rid of the locking collar and turn the retainer out and we'll be able to get inside there and have a look at the condition so first off no screwdriver we've rendered a mallet that's actually gone quite well that off bead of WD just inside those threads because they do look quite oxidized so we might not take this off today we might just let that soak but I'm going to give it a go
Now it is turning. What I'm trying to do is work it back and forth just to get some of that dilly d forge inside. I'd also appreciate any comments if there's a special tool for this because I'm pretty sure an adjustable spanner is not the right tool. But uh, it's the only tool I've got that seems to work. But I'm pretty sure there must be a proper tool to remove these bottom bracket retaining bolts, retaining nuts, whatever you want to call it, any caps. Got in anyway. Side here. That is very dry. So somewhere in there, there's a, a lot of powdered rust. You can see that. Um, you can still see the ball bearings in that side. Um, but all the rest of collapsing in the bottom of the crankcase here. So obviously water and probably corrosion from the... Well, it's actually not from up there because that is sealed. There's a hole in the bottom there so any corrosion that might have been in the seat post or seat tube there's a little hole inside so that might have also not been helping. But yeah, we've got a Quite a bad collection of dust and ball bearings. So the seat post looks to have moved anyway with all the excitement that's been going on. That seems to have moved because I don't think the seat bracket's moved. So the seat post has moved while I've obviously been lifting and shifting. So we need to try and loosen that off a bit more and try and work on these as well. Um, so if I can maybe get the, the whole assembly off, or if I'm going to have to try and get the seat. So let's try the seat first and see what happens. So I'll ease it. I think what we're going to do is I'm going to call it there for now. It's going to try and lubricate some of these bolts a bit more. I think it's probably best I have to take time and wait and try and force some of these parts and break any more. I've jetted a bit down in the frame, but already I can see that that's looks pretty welded. This is looks pretty welded in at the uh, top of the frame there, so it doesn't come out. It might be a case if we clean it in situ um, and then lacquer paint it. But yeah, that's it for today. Um, if you guys could comment on how you'd re uh, remove any sort of oil residue on the on the parts before I paint it, I'd be happy to uh, hear that. Um, and any other comments, you know, good or bad, uh, constructive though, please. I don't need to be told. I'll see where I am for, for smashing bits up. Okay, thanks.